Salutations everyone, I'm here, Mocha Lover, of course, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, which we play as a GGR, but so, let's just jump into the comments as well as this focus. So, we read this event yesterday, the yellow <clears throat> race. So, I asked you guys whether we should do, I support a detente with Japan. That's how you pronounce it, I actually had to look it up, I forgot how to pronounce it, I said detente, it's detente. Or a confrontational approach would protect the big old, big old rack. So, overall, there's support for both sides, but there's quite a bit more support for the glory of battle. You guys recommended <clears throat> you guys recommended at the time of this recording that we should go with the confrontation, so, okay, we're going to protect the Reich. Let's see what happens. But currently, we're still doing smile for the cameras. Smile, smile. Actually, I just loaded up the game again, and now we have $10 billion in annual deficit. Hmm. I'm not sure how that happened, but let's see other expenditures. <sighs> that hurts me so much. Military spending is costing us quite a bit. Uh, oh, okay. Now after I after we let a day go by, it's three now three point zero eight billion. So be it. After that, we should do the glory battle. Japanese warfare is missing a key component. A matter of fact, they're missing the key component for a successful fighting force. What they boast in terms of numerical superiority or technological innovation means little once those words are recognized by what they are, only words. Guns and cannons are obsolete in the age of mutually assured destruction. Battles between great powers do not rage in the cities or fields, but rather on the international stage. A more aggressive pivot towards Asia will put Japan on the back foot, forcing them to play defense. Well, this is more reformist, uh, you know, loyalty, but that's actually okay with me just because... Notice are gone, less reformists, that means more conservatives, right? The interview. Richard Dudman adjusted his bow tie nervously. This interview would either propel his career into the stars or send it spiraling into the dirt. Fortunately for him, the uh, big old dudes had provided a comprehensive list of topics to avoid. Oh, how grateful he was for those little dudes in their documents. He couldn't wait to engage in a whole hour of propaganda. What were the alternatives? Say something out of line and the interview in an instant? Perhaps even damage the U.S.? Uh, U.S. German detente. Before it properly begun, this journalistic thirst had forced him to accept this interview, a decision he had qu quickly grown to a regret. Heil Bowman came in a voice as Dudman shot to his feet as a saluting midget approached. The man was squatty and burly with a plain round face. This was a fear? He looked like a butcher who had suffered a midlife crisis and joined the Boy Scouts. Dudman raised his own arm in response. Uh, Heil Dudman, he responded. Bowman's eyes flickered to his adjutants. Amusement, anger, a chill ran down his spine. This was no local butcher, he had to remind himself. This was a butcher of Europe. The fear sat down opposite of him, joined by a speckled translator. Thank you for agreeing to this interview, Mr. Borman. What do you hope to achieve in your upcoming conference in Stockholm? Fear Borman, uh, Borman's translator corrected with a false smile. Well, Mr. Dudman, I wish to improve Germanic-American relations. The time has come for, my, for the eyes to thaw. The upcoming conference is a gesture of my diplomatic goodwill. So, uh, Fear Borman, Dudman showed off. The uniformed Nazis around the room were staring at the journalist. With polite smiles and burning eyes, a pang of inspiration hit him. These Nazi dudes could control the interview, but they couldn't control how the American public perceived it. Dudman grinned. Another hardball for you, Fair Billman. Do you have a pet? What about your favorite color? <laughs> wow, okay. We're not going to talk about his ex sexual exploits or his, uh, <clears throat> his burning desires. We are not afraid, though. Comrades, we should be aware of our place in history. All of us recall the days of terror when the haze from Moscow was burning and that of the half a dozen other cities that was still pungent and fresh. All of us bear wounds at our own heel. The Union broke apart upon a wheel of chaos, and its peoples scattered to the four winds. Even now, I have family that know not, not whether I am alive or dead. We all lost irreplaceable ideals, too. I will never take the triumph of socialism for granted again, but it is time, like a widow, throwing off the cloak of self-shame to cast away our fears. The fascist wolf's wolf hovers over our land, still slavering it like a beast in heat, but its shops are no longer what he had feared. It is trapped in a nightmare of its own. We must not be afraid, friend, to call it what it is. It is simply another imperialist experiment like all the rest of the armies who once dared to march into the Rodina, and like all the rest, it is doomed to perish. Yes, we must not be afraid. Let us take strength, knowing that what we see before us is not the last guttering of an inferno, and in our hands are the buckets that shall extinguish it once and for all. For those who would presume to speak for or answer to the fascists, I speak only this. You would believe that the world would crumble before you, and for a time you were right, but the Tsar thought that he would never perish either, and Napoleon believed Russia would burn, and the Mongols believed the Rus would never rise again against them. They have been wrong every single time, and you will be too will be wrong. The dream of old of a... The old dream of a Red Union, of what we once had, is waiting as clouds gather, as as will be its hoppingers. We will throw all that is lost to us. Well, someone killed each other. It's already 69, so please kill each other. I've spent a lot more infrastructure, or more money to build more infrastructure and civilian stuff. And we have our stuff down here, which we still can't do anything. 
and reclaiming the pack. There we do this one. The Eber, the Aerobarung des Paradises. Paradises. So I've already sent my ships down to the Southwest Indian Ocean. As you can see, the strike force is heading on down there. So we'll get down there eventually. We can't do anything about this. 4.5% are... I've set the subs down there, I believe. Yes. So they're making their way down there. It's just going to take some time. Oh, never mind. Hmm... Well, then. do we have a port anywhere we can dock these guys? Uh, I don't know get docking rights to Spain. I don't know. I guess not. I need to get some coffee here. Or I have some coffee here, but it's time to drink up. We need 12 ships, and there's... Well, it's OFN. The Africa Shield. Military access has been disabled for TNO. Well, I'm not really sure how to get down there then. If we could send like 13 guys. Because the range is pretty darn bad. Okay, so this is removing. A little bit of lag, that's okay. Look at that lag. Okay, so they're heading on down there. That should be good enough for us. Okay. Sometimes some of these ships are really old and outdated and you can't really do anything about it. Is there anything else we can do here? Not really, no, actually. All we can do is Unternehmen Schwetz. West Russia? West Russia? Cool. But yeah, I can't wait to integrate, like, Poland. Slave population zero in Norway? They don't, what, they don't believe in slavery? Oh, what a bunch of uh, backwards peoples, we'll call them. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What is this on the glory of battle? The effect of the anti sphere vanguard modifier will increase off one. The Niedermai Hentig Expedition Resurgent, or. Resurgent, yeah, it's resurgent. It is. Afghanistan holds a title that some consider not suited the back, not that does not suit the backwards and traditional state. <clears throat> the graveyard empires has no doubt carved out its own place in the world, but it seemed hesitant to expand beyond that scope. All until the country took a t sharp turn, seeking to rapidly industrialize and modernize. Afghanistan has a history of its precarious placement between powers. Britain and Russia being the most re relevant example. Once again, Afghanistan finds itself sandwiched between two rival spheres of influence. Rushing to Kabul's aid in the quest for modernization will remind the Afghan people who really have their best interests at heart. Silk Road, Iron Fist, Martin Bowman stared at the map over his desk. He'd become a regular consumer of German cartographers by this point. A modern map of Asia. From the confusing, most likely inaccurate portrayals of Russia to the Italian Middle East, to the Japanese East Asia, and, of course, in all between of those is Fourth World, the neutral nations, under the control of no global superpower, independent from the blocks located or locked in this Cold War, here he would find his allies. Iran was an obvious choice. The government was already somewhat aligned with the Reich and would not be difficult to get them partner with Germany against the Japanese Empire. There are those rumors of internal instability, but those rumors existed in almost every other country on the globe. There was not much reason to pay them any mind. The next country was another obvious one, India. Though the Indian government had tended to lean far more left than the Reich would find appropriate, there were still some rumors of this partnership with the Americans in some areas. The modern world was all about real politique and it was impossible to pass down a partnership with a nation that big and such a good reason to hate Japan, they're occupying their territory for God's sakes. Finally, Afghanistan. It was less powerful and less developed than the other two, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that Afghanistan is a graveyard of empires, and there is a certain empire that bore men would like to dig a grave for. Thus, Afghanistan becomes the third piece of the anti-Japanese pact. Asia shall be freed of Japan's menace. We lose political power, get more stability, and war support. Well, that's okay. We already get a lot of political... Wow. That's... Yeah, that's, that's a lot of political power. Quite a few. We've got a, a few other comms to go through, but oh, North Sea investigation. What does that say? Huh. Reports from the North Sea. Mon Bowman thumbed through the documents with interest, his enthusiasm growing with every flick of a page. According to isolated reports, oil had been discovered in the North Sea. The Fuhrer shook his head in disbelief and leaned back in his chair. Surely not. Was such an untapped potential for economic growth hiding away between the British Isles and Northern Europe? Optimism without reason was pointless. Borman grabbed a pen and began to scribble. Clandestine investigations would be launched immediately to determine the validity of these reports. Naturally, he expected to have his doubts confirmed. Yet, if the investigators yielded discovery, let us wait and see. We've been down there. And what can we, why can we do that? We need Flecton B Camouflage. Okay. Now nah, we don't have to go all the way up. There we go. I mean, I guess that's why we have a lot of debt now. When we did, when I did this yesterday, I kept clicking on it. It didn't give us that much more, uh, you know, deficit, which you know really sucks. Yeah. Oh, we can build in there too. There you go. Oh, I should have finished this up yesterday. I guess I didn't finish this stuff. Whatever. 
you go. Good enough for now. Uh, after that, let's go and do the Aryans of the East. India itself is a relatively new actor on the world stage. For centuries, India was merely a description, a term for a large mass of land. Few could have pictured life after the British Empire. Even less could imagine a united Indian state emerging as a regional power. In most aspects, India is still not whole. To the East, a rival government backed by Tokyo promises an end to the Western influence in India. The ceasefire between the two governments is rocky at best and actively collapsing at worst. The world simply does not have room for multiple Indias. Eventually, come heck or high water, India will stand united. It is the duty of the Reich and of all Aryan peoples to protect the birthplace of the race, to prevent a Japanese puppet from subjugating more proud Aryan men and women. Good. Digging in Empire's Grey, Borman touched down in Kabul after a long, arduous, and extremely tedious route. Flying in from a helicopter, taking off from a carrier that he was taken to by a plane, over an extremely long route to avoid hostile airspace. He was more than ready to get off this helicopter and meet this king, Mohammed Zahir Shah. The palace was a great sight better than the rest of Kabul. No magnificent pillars of gold like the myth mythical kings of old, though Borman did, did find the rugs rather pretty. There was a great chair, which Borman figured to be some sort of throne, but it was empty. Rather excellent, as Borman th would not stand for having to meet some Muslim in a great throne above him. He was led to a side chamber where he saw King Mohammed sitting at a table waiting for him. You're an enemy of Japan, Borman was direct, drawing out the conversation which did not have much use to him. That is correct, the king said. There are millions of Afghanis who are also enemies of Japan. Unfortunately, there are not millions of guns to match. I get your point. The Reich has more guns and soldiers, and I'm sure they will find their way into Afghani hands soon if you are as great as an enemy of Japan as you say. I am. Then you have nothing to fear. The Reich will ensure Japan's enemies are strong. A smile came to Mohammed's face. Perhaps this German was quite reasonable after all. Now, Shah said. We have economic questions to discuss. Bowman stifled a groan. Now, a railway here would allow an easy link from our minds to a new industrial sector here in... This meeting's gonna last a while. Sad. Oh, look, we got that one done too. And let's not forget this. We must get rid of these reformists. Pesky bugs. Even though I did say I wanna get that one done first, but it doesn't matter. Infinite reformists. Even though I would still like to go down that path. Oh, let's do this. Here we go. After the collapse of the continent of German Africa and the loss of Madagascar, we lost our only outpost in the Indian Ocean. They and the Japanese reigned unopposed among the southern waters. However, the chaotic situation in Africa uh, provides us with an opportunity to regain our presence in the region. The Kriegsmarine has been preparing to launch a swift attack against the hostile forces that occupy the islands of Mauritius and the Réunion near Madagascar. Should they, should they succeed, we will be able to reestablish a base to withstand the Japanese aggression in the Indi Indian Ocean. I hope this doesn't backfire on us. Let's go and do this. So we need the camouflage. Um, uh, there it is. Flectern. Ah, very good. So we'll see what happens in uh, within a week. <clears throat> and we can do silhouette deduction just because we can. More naval AA. It won't really matter much. So Creek and Ring action report. Secre. Oh, 723. Summary. Operation Tropical Paradise is a roaring success. Reclamation of the rightful Reich territories in Sakura, South African coastal region east. Met little resistance and were successfully were successful in taking territories lost during the late and post-Hitler instability period. Enemy position. The enemy were not prepared for any kind of sustained assault, especially from a developed nation. There were no pillboxes, few trenches, and the weaponry was of notably cl low quality. It was a perfect depiction of the rebel groups put down by the Reich so many times. Assault report. The Kriegsmarine began with the shelling of enemy positions, though there is not much to show. Many enemy casualties occurred in this time, far more than usual, as Kriegsmarine soldiers noticed a great many enemies that showed signs of being killed through explosions. Casualty report. The Kriegsmarine reports 25 dead and 156 wounded. Conclusion. This is a predictable success against a far inferior enemy. In fact, the Kriegs Marine was almost too careful in future assaults on enemy positions like this. It would be safe to shell the enemy for a longer time instead of rushing to an assault in fear of the assault coming too late. It's simply not possible for the enemy to prepare an assault under the conditions they were in. Report received. Awesome. The Alagen of Madagascar. I was actually... I guess it makes sense why we did get that. Wait, I could have just come over here first, but whatever. Whatever. Uh... Go home. Well, we got him back. That's awesome. Oh, look at... Oh, my gosh. That resistance. 0. 0.7. 0. 0.6. Jesus. I, was it the Japanese that held this? Oh, my gosh. Was that worth it? Maybe not. I thought that could like, boil over into World War Three. Man, why can't we help these guys out? We can help out once. Can we do it now again? Oh, look. 2.56. Not bad. 
Here into the East Guten Tag Tehran. The Iranian state has been aptly described as a German vacation home in the Near East. Economic ties run deep between Tehran and Germania, with an abundance of oil being piped up to Europe annually. Economic ties bind only briefly, cultural ties are the ones that last for centuries. Visiting Iran for reasons other than discussing economics will most certainly relieve the Shah, who continues to face mounting pressure from his people. Hosting even a lowly official ought to remind them of who they're laboring for, the Aryan race. Weathered fear, the noise of the water rushing from the small waterfall combined with the chirpings of the birds made a garden of breathing, living environment. Flowers of all colors decorated the surroundings, creating a pleasant visual spectacle for its observer. From the covered gallery, the German ambassador opened his arms with admiration. Ah, what a beauty. Wallflowers, roses, carnations, there, there are flowers of every kind. At his side, the Indian diplomat smiled proudly. I appreciate your good taste, ambassador. Maintaining this garden was not cheap, and compliments are always welcome. After admiring the flower beds for a few minutes, the ambassador decided to concentrate on his mission. The Japanese and their lackeys are a potential threat to your government. I suggest that you should adopt a more aggressive posture. The yellow ro the, uh, the yellow race smells weakness like sharks smell blood in the water. The expression of the Indian diplomat changed, taking offense at the comment. With all due respect, Ambassador, I don't like to think that you described my nation as weak. The Ambassador gulped a bit, but he quickly hit it with a force left. Of course not, my friend. India has never been so strong. However, a country that underestimates their enemies is doomed to fall. The ambassador turned his head back to the garden, making a fake sound of concern. Can you imagine what the Azad Hind barbarians would do to this wonderful garden? For a moment, the Indian diplomat could imagine the garden reduced to ashes and the awful smell of corpses and burning petals intoxicating the air. His German counterpart smugly noticed the concern on his face. At that moment, one of them could only think one thing. I got him. Sad good. Oh, deploy and eh, just, nothing, nothing else we can do. This helps with research speed and counterintelligence. We might as well. I mean, what else are we going to do here with this? Any more money? No? Okay. Guten Tag, Tehran. There we go. Now the conservative. Ah, International Forum on the Stability of Asia. Oh, Zangier Film Review. The origins of films mastering is often light in propaganda. Take the birth of a nation in America. A very clearly racist film, yet responsible for many modern film techniques that have really modernized cinema as such. While many of my countrymen are denouncing Zanjir as a thinly veiled anti Japanese propaganda pick, it is a genuinely innovative and enjoyable picture. Moving away from Bollywood's obsession with romance films, Zanjir is a dark and gritty crime drama. The lead actor, Amitabha, Amitabha, a uh, buck. Chan proves himself to be a versatile actor, but he really isn't the star of the show. The film has garnered controversy for its portrayal of its setting, that being Japanese-occupied India. Corruption is utterly rampant, and most of the police are useless. Bak Chan's colleagues in the police force, mostly Japanese, revel in cruelty and are hopelessly corrupt, making lavish purchases off the bribes they crew over time. It is worth noting that the film's propagandistic tendencies get much more noticeable as the film goes on. When the propagandist pro protagonist is arrested, the prisons are a horrifying, greedy depiction of life under the Japanese, with barely any food for the prisoners, and an unbelievably brutal prison staff toes the line between a terrifying portrayal of the Japanese hordes and a laughable attempt at being brutal for brutality's sake, of course. Most people don't think of nuances like the portrayal of the Japanese when pointing out or pointing to the propaganda of this film after the film ends. Credits rolling. In a big white letters comes a real portrayal of life in Japanese-occupied India. May we return to them and rejoice in peace. Overall, Zanjira was an excellent film. I look forward to seeing the future of this director and these actors, and much like of India, I look forward to seeing us being reunited with the countrymen who are under the Japanese. Glad to see the Indians are making the propaganda we want. Very good. And Japan stands surrounded. The itchy trigger finger of the Americans keeps Tokyo on edge at all times. In the old days, Japan needn't worry about the right at their ally. That changed when the Japanese depravity or depravity was put on full display during the attempted assassination. The fear's gaze has been directed towards the east, the hot spot for conflict and civil strife. With the plurality of the world defying the Japanese Empire, it is imperative for the world to see a different set of the fear, a calculated and strategic one. Though little is likely to come from the forum, the fear will likely be able to use the opportunity to denounce the Japanese government. A visit to the Shah. Volta Heva had been idling for a few minutes in the waiting room of Shivan Palace when the Shah's aide invited him into the office. Mohammed Reza Pahlavi was dressed in military uniform and flanked by his imperial guards. Your Majesty exclaimed somewhat impatiently, Tehran is magnificent. I see your architects have taken some inspiration from our own, he said with a grin. Of course, Minister Havel. All we want our capital to reach the heights of Germania one day, responded the monarch, seeing a bit nervous. Nervous was good, Havel thought. He could use that. One hour had passed and the meeting went on. Havel's main goal was to reaffirm the Reich's commitments to Iran and its defense, but also to learn about rumors of the Shah's opposition who seemed braver than ever lately. His ride from the airport to the palace had been insightful. Tehran was indeed more beautiful 
beautiful than ever, but one could see its decay and the unrest among its people. What the minister needed was to hear it straight from the lion's mouth. So while we can expect some aggression from the Iraqis, the Shah was in the middle of his sentence when Havel raised his hand in dismissal. Your Majesty, forgive me for my bluntness, but you and I both know Iraq is no threat to your nation. Havel just stood himself in his seat as the Shah remained stunned and went on. I'll be more direct. Our intelligence reports indi indicates your... Uh, opposition is growing bolder every day that passes. What I need to report to the Fuhrer is this. Must the Reich turn its gaze to Iran, or do you have the situation under control? The Shah's first thought was uh, how his ministers would never interrupt him so abruptly. The second, he soon voiced, we may need the Reich's assistance in the future, Minister Havel. Ooh. Interesting. Interessant. Oh. Oh boy. And once again... Russia is falling apart, promising leads. Prelimi preliminary reports pertaining to the hunt for oil have reached the Fuhrer's desk from our investigators in the North Sea. Fortunately for us, the investigation is running at an acceptable pace, and our surveys are running smoothly furthermore. Uh, several leads have opened up to us, which allow us, or are which we are following with keen interest and dedication. Could the rumors be true? We wait the answer with bated breath. Good. Since we have all this political power, we must use it, right? 2.2 billion? Very nice. Anything else up here? Nope. Alright. Anything down here? Nope. That's so sad. One of the comments was saying is that Bowman Nomics shall save the Einheit's Pact. You know it. You know Daddy Bowman. Our bald daddy's doing a great job. And we're building up a lot of infrastructure. And as someone else put it, hopefully Zukov doesn't rip it apart. But, uh, Breitz, Breitz Bahn, Minsk to Riga. Annual GDP growth factor? I don't care. We just spent a billion dollars. Oh my goodness. We just spent another billion dollars, and now another half billion dollars. I didn't even read this stuff. I'm just like, okay. Infrastructure? Sounds great to me. Integration substantial. Ukraine? I want to integrate the Ukraine. Notable in Auslan. Uh, complete in Muscovine. Oh, I love Laban's realm. Regardless of what country it's for. One, two, three, four. Wow. No support, huh? All right, whatever. And, ooh, joint air operations. Don't mind if we do. And we're done with our air doctrine. Awesome. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to do the naval doctrine, too. Green water navy, blue water navy. Well, we don't really have a large navy, I'll be honest. So, we'll do this one anyways. Blue water navy. And with you, let's go and do basic fire controls, because it doesn't matter what we do. Or at least with technology as much. So, to do this, we require one of the following... It's time to pay a visit to an old friend. Ooh, why not? Japan sacrificed everything for China. Millions of men, yen, and bullets all burned at the sacrificial altar in the name of the empire. It burns jewels in this crown with the Raj and the brightest ray of, of the rising sun is China. To keep the most prized possession close, Japan polices uh, diplomats in China like no other. There's no excuse in the eyes of Tokyo to allow a foreign threat into China, to or another power into China, to allow another state to do what Japan did to Britain's jewel. Hosting a meeting in China with Japan may present with Japan present, may be the only way to get access into the Middle Kingdom. It's only a matter of applying their strategy and using it against them. Gebroschen uh, file. Off the radar, Geheim. At approximately one hour ago, one of our early warring radar stations at Wilhelmshaven reported the disappearance of an Iceland-based American B-52 bomber. The bomber was being tracked, as it was on a standard patrol over neutral waters in the Norwegian Sea. It was believed that the aircraft was most likely crashed into the ocean, with the fate of the crew currently unknown. According to the analysts in the OKL technical office, it's highly likely that such an aircraft would be carrying at least one American thermonuclear device. Given that such a device would have landed in neutral waters, we would be within our rights to reclaim it as salvage if we obtained it first. Such a discovery would yield critical insights into the American nuclear weapons program, and perhaps even give us a techni technical edge. Additionally, the blow to American prestige would be enormous, especially if the crew members survived and, we were, and they were rescued by us. We recommend that you authorize a naval and air detachment to be sent at once. Let's get that bomb. Absolutely. Bombs away. 69, 69, 69. Very nice. Alright, hopefully we can win this one. Gotta hope we can win this one, because I don't want to fade in, fade out too early. Conservative loyalty. Oh, no more interaction points. It sucks. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, bug political enemies. Yeah, that's not enough uh, stability yet. We're a very stable nation, as you can tell. Alright, so we've got one day left. Does it does it go any higher than zero? And, yeah, it does 40%. Wow, that's pretty good. Even though it's going to be going down pretty quickly. Ah, oh, yes. So many civilian factories. 2.17, not bad. Actually, if we cut, let's see, so we like spending at 15%, let's see, 10% of this is 4.8 billion. We would actually, you know what? Boom, there you go. We cut civilian spending a little bit. Which honestly, we still, we maxed out on construction so far, so look at all this building that we're doing. Holy bad words. Hold on. Uh, Gabrosian, or fall, the Americans 
let us pass. Geheim. After a series of back channel tents, uh, Tense back-channel discussions between American officials and representatives of our government. We reach a settlement. The American government has agreed to allow our flotilla to enter the Norwegian Sea and salvage a B-52 and nuclear weapon, provided that we leave any surviving crew alone. This is a massive coup for us, providing new insight to American avionics and nuclear weapons technology. Our aircraft vessels, our aircraft and vessels are already approaching the likely wreck site. Within the next several days, the Reich will have triumphed in the standoff without a shot fired. Man, the Americans are just caving in in this timeline, because earlier we had a thing with the, their pilot and such. Jesus. But how many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We literally have 24 lines full of 20 out of 20 civilian factories working, and then plus some more. German industrial might is huge, but Eastern Knights. It was a grand bright day in Delhi. There was a wonderful place to hold a meeting against, again, Japan. Or maybe against Japan, the being the capital of multiple empires, an overall large city, and centrally positioned enough to ensure easy access for the Iranians and the Afghanis. Borman had no such nuance in mind when he selected Delhi for the meeting, however. He simply thought the capital of the largest country would be suitable. The meeting was, to be fair, a bit of a mess. The rest of the attendees seemed to be, give as much mind to nuance as Borman did. Liquor flowed like rivers, and though some of the attendees did not have much affection for the Indian booze, they did have affection for escaping from a boring meeting through the path of alcohol. There were some very careful characters. An Iranian representative met the Fuhrer, and talked about how it was nice to speak from one area into the next, confusing him. When an Indian representative said the same thing, he quickly began to regret the amount of alcohol present at the conference. A few real discussions had been... Being had would, most likely, be completely forgotten the next morning. In short, it was no real recipe for success. The one meaningful moment of the night was late, when it was coming to a close. The Fuhrer stumbled on stage, flanked by a bodyguard. There he gave a short but memorable speech. We're all gathered here today in the hopes that one day the continent of Asia shall be freed from the... <clears throat> Japanese. A roar of applause from the audience. At least we could all agree on one thing. At least we could all agree in the end. We get stability, political power, and hey, people like us. United against Japan. I love it. Eastern Knights. Let's go to India. Let's go to Japan. No, not, not Japan. India, Afghanistan, and Tehran. Oh, we're going to be end up in Tehran one way or another. I'll, I'll promise you that. A heist for the ages. Japan sacrificed everything for China. Millions, millions, and millions. And I've already read this one. But I, it's time to pay a visit to an old friend, my friends. I'm ready to read. I'm excited to see what happens. Ooh, what is this? Eastern Industrial Buildup? Ah, yeah. Gokusen. Money, obviously, doesn't matter to me. Because Bomanomics works. It just works. Tia no Fallout crossover when? Let's come back over here. And, oh, still 0 out of 3, man. Man. Actually, you know what? Let's keep an eye on when I can get more interactions. Just because I want to keep an uh, when it comes back, and then we'll figure out how long it takes. Actually, what do we have over here? Ahead ten. Oh, okay. yes, infrastructure modernization. Yes, please. Austin, extraction. Very good. Uh, also, we have to wait for. Oh, the skilled workforce is currently forty-four point five percent. That's pretty good. Um, so that's why I maxed this out because w when we did that, the GDP growth bonus is going to be really good. Let's see. The non-slave workforce is an increase of 4.5%. So we max it out. We get a, a... We use slaves way, 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 way less. Which And we have a more skilled workforce as time goes on. So it's totally worth investing in it right now. Discoveries in the North Sea. After years of exploration and prospecting, a vast oil reserve has been discovered in the North Sea. At first thought to be... My, my bad. Uh, fool's errand. Exploration increased after finding natural gas in Germany's westernmost Reichskommissariat in the early 60s. Since then, private investors from both Norway and Germany have been looking for precious black gold offshore, following and prospecting the Norwegian continental shelf. After nearly a decade of costly drilling, they finally did it. Located on the southern tip of the shelf, the wealth that had been found under the sea is seemingly boundless. Geologists now even believe that there is more oil, much more lining huge swaths of Norwegian coast. We need to be discovered. As of now, just the reserves that have been discovered are the largest offshore deposits in the world to the elation of both the Germans and Norwegians. It is yet to be seen how the two will proceed from here, but oil reserves could be uh, give both econo both economies a huge boost. Norway in particular could see huge economic benefits and some much needed industry diversification, but must also consider Germany's interests. Nonetheless, this resides, provides a much needed resource for both nations. There's a whole ocean of oil under our feet. Which is really good. Now, I don't mind splitting some of the revenue with Norway. That's totally fine with me. It's part of their lands. And even though they're just fascists, those liberal fascists, that's fine with me. That's totally fine with me. They should have, they should get some sort of, you know, benefit from this. We definitely need to increase our industrial expertise. Which is kind of strange that we haven't found anything yet for that. But whatever. 
Oh, so here we are. So we're going to do this. It's June 1st. Let's go ahead and continue doing this, and let's we'll see when we can do some more of this later on. Conservatives, one, two, three. Allied, very good. Uh, I love it when we have conservative slave plantations. All right, good. So it's June 1st, and we'll see what happens next. So I'll report, despite himself, Martin Borman rubbed his hands together in anticipation and opened the sealed document. The final report from the North Sea investigators had arrived. He knew it was foolish to be excited. After all, the report was likely to have found no traces of oil, rendering the entire investigation a waste of time and resources, and yet he couldn't believe the words he was reading. His eyes raced across the pages with increased speed until he slammed his fist on the desk and laughed out loud. Oil had been found on the northern shelf. Untapped oil, precious, yet not claimed by any other nation. Borman smiled at his own genius. The Reich will declare the North Sea oil rights to be exclusively German. The right oil is rightfully German property. And we'll pay off those guys later on. What is this? Oh, we need extraction four. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> and this is directly about the oil, large oil deposits in the North Sea. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you know the, uh, the comments from yesterday's video said it's disappointing that we can't like change cultures of provinces. Yeah, it would be cool and cool if we did, but at the same time, I kind of realized that we can't do that just because there's only so much time in TNO. But actually, once more and more content comes out for TNO, maybe that'd be possible. Just because you start in 62, right? You go all the way up until like 74. Within 12 years, or you know, 16, 18 years, depending on how you know developed TNO gets, there's time to change cultures. That's almost a generation of people. Almost 20 years. Oof. Shift the window. Let's offer token concessions. Although our initial negotiations have started well and the American public in general was receptive to the beginning of the reapproachment, our efforts have not been enough to shift the attitude towards our geopolitical goals. The American diplomats insist on our concessions before they can start considering our demands. Uh, to reassure the U.S., we can give them a small but significant gesture. Of course, we can't just give up our sovereignty and influence for every piece of Europe that is regarded as occupied or disputed by the American observers, but we can make small steps to show that we are as committed to world peace as they are. To show our interest in a mutually beneficial relationship, we can recognize Iceland as an independent state and revoke the Danish territory dispute over the country. The Danes may not agree with this move, but their weight in the international relations is irrelevant to our bidding. Ceding the claim for a territory that was left out of our reach and for more than two decades is more than a reasonable price to pay for a reapproachable behavior from our enemies. Other countries in the region raise objections. Well, that's not good. Keep an eye on this. Nope. So remember we did it on June 1st? <gasps> yes. Yes. The North Sea Oil Conference. The Führer has decided to call a conference to settle the disputes surrounding the German Reich's proclamation of North Sea Oil Rights. Representatives from the pathetic little nations who dare to complain have been invited to attend. Men will doubtlessly be overwhelmed with fear upon their arrival when they realize who they're complaining to. Only one thing is for certain. The GGR discover the oil, the GGR claim the oil, and the GGR will exploit the oil for the benefit of the Aryan race. Let them come. Now, the United Kingdom. I doubt we'll be able to get them in the Einheis pack. I really wish we will, but the invitation sent. The letters have been sent out to the tiny nation squalling over our actions. With a polite but firm tone, we've invited them to resolve the issue by joining our North Sea Oil Conference, where we will discuss the future ownership of the precious resource. With the diplomats' prowess, we should be able to gain legitimacy in claiming the entire northern shelf for ourselves. Let them come. I really don't mind if, like, Norway gets it. That's fine with me. All nations except uh, Norway, Denmark, England, and Scotland have all accepted Germany's invitation to the upcoming North Sea Oil Conference, where the nautical borders will be settled and the status of the North sh Northern Shelf will shall be settled once and for all. The conference awaits. Now, you can tell that this is uh, starting to get to a later game, in which things aren't as flushed out, because England and Scotland don't exist anymore. It's all the United Kingdom, so... We'll see what happens. Alright, it's now June 10th. Come on. Meeting in Bremen. The delegates from Norway, or all those other nations, have met up in the German city of Bremen, where they await in the initiation of the German North Sea Oil Conference. They have been provided with excellent accommodation and service on behalf of the German government. While some see this as a simple gesture of goodwill, others view it as a cynical negotiation tactic. The U.S. delegates have also arrived, spending much time deliberating with their English allies and acting just as suspicious with the, about the luxurious treatment. Who knew the right could solve issues with diplomacy? Our offer. The delegates have gathered around a large circular table in a spacious meeting room. A rather glorious map of the North Sea is on display at the front of the room, framed by two German flags. In front of every delegate sits a glass of water, a pile of notes, and a name card, and a small flag denoting their nation. The English delegates have been joined by the American allies, who are observing proceedings with requested neutrality. Our delegates have decided to mocking, to mocking make intense eye contact with the OFN representatives as they deliver their ultimatum. We have presented their deal to the conference of attendees. We will hold on to our claims over the North Sea oil rights, said, and anyone who disagrees will face the consequences. If the foreign delegates yield, however, they must sign an official document signaling their nation's absolute acceptance, the art of the deal. 
But let's go and do this one like we did earlier. And we'll continue doing this side as well. So. Look, Angle's Conference. Oh, they have a conference too. It'll not amount to anything. Hey, we got that one done too. Great. We could research. So we did all this except for... Let's get some personal radios. Why not? Anything else around in the world, actually? No. Oh. Unternehmer und Stablish. Yes. Oh, we need Nahkampf training. Well, gosh dang it, we can't do that one. I should realize that. But you know what? This is kind of a little bit lukewarm, I'll say, just because you're not exactly sure what technology you need when you'll get it, so. We better launch special messaging. Oh. To help out with China. Alright, cool. Minus 5.77 billion. And 0 out of 3. Is it every two weeks, maybe? No? No? 0 out of 3. Maybe it's once every month. It might be once every month, so. 2.94. The nations accept. After much debate inside the conference hall and private discussion outside it, the delegates of Norway, Denmark, and the UK have all agreed to Germany's wild demands in the name of peace. The rights claimed by the North Sea oil remain undisputed, and each country will present an officially recognized and officially recognized illegality of such claims. The American delegates had a firm say in directing England towards this final decision, claiming that any resistance to Germany's ultimatum could trigger nuclear war between the OFN and the Unity Pact. The delegates have now returned to the countries of origin to face the judgment of their leaders with their tails stuck between their legs. The oil shall flow. That seems like we could have had a little bit more there, though. Like, a little more interaction. As we, Like I said earlier, this is starting to show the cracks of TNO, but the rich is unimaginable. Borman sucked deeply on a cigar, mm, suck, suck, and chuckled as the news came through. The North Sea Oil Conference was concluded. The bickering foreign diplomats had begrudgingly kowtowed to German demands and legally accepted their claim on the oil. Who said these things could not be solved by diplomacy? The f this facade of a conference gave Germany the ability to extract the precious resource without foreign dissent or interference. Oil, the lack of which had plagued the Reich in its early years, was just sitting in the North Wing extraction. Borman shook his head in disbelief. He took out a bottle of champagne from his desk drawer and sighed contently. It was time to celebrate. The oil is ours. Civil War in Yemen? I wonder if there's anything we can do about that. It's literally been three weeks since we've been able to do this, so I'm assuming it's about once every month. Anything else here? No, no probably not. I just gotta keep an eye on this. I wanna make sure that we spend as much money as possible so we can do okay. North Sea Oil Exploration? Nice. We get two fuel silos too. Awesome. Uh, the exploration has to com be completed first. Very good. Very, very good. Minus six billion? Das Cotton House, eh? The Yemen Arab Republic. A civil war is broken out in the sandy mountainous waste and known as the Mutawakilite Kingdom of Yemen, and it is in our interest to support the rebels fighting against the remote Arabian Kingdom. The rebels are fighting for an Arab Republic in the name of an ideology called Ba'athism, which is a pan-Arab nationalist and pseudo-socialist movement whose ideological intricacies are very complex and complicated. What is important is that they are challenging Italian and Saudi influence in the oil-rich Gulf region, and factions of their movement are sympathetic to Germany. If we send aid to these Ba'athist rebels and successfully topple the Italian left dog of a monarch, we can see their own geopolitical influence and economic power expand, and other peace on the global chessboard. Now, I don't want to do this yet, because because whenever this happened for the United States, it countered what we were working on for the focus tree. So I'm going to wait, get our focus done, then click on this. A little bit of. Oh, we can actually move this. That's nice. How many more days? We got three days. That's fine. That's fine with me. So it's literally once every month, probably then. Mm hmm. So once every month, you can do this. Good to know. Which makes sense. Conservative. Oh, we're really close there. Nice. Thank you. I want to get involved. Uh, anything on the right? How about on the left? No, it must be a decision then. That's fine. That is totally fine. So we did this, which is awesome. I would like to keep doing this and see what happens. Took its concessions the Italian debacle. Ooh, a menace. Break the ice. Denounce the turncoats. Relax trade restrictions. Relax trade restrictions, you get ooh, more consumer goods factories. Land forts, meeting with Italian diplomats. Reopen the uh, Gebirgsjäger, so Montanias. Ever vigil vigilant watch. It's not bad. Das Auftauen. Peace in her time? Oh god. I want to deal with Burgundy last, so. Uh, we'll get there eventually. Shift the window. There are no boundaries to American hypocrisy. Proclaiming the ideas of freedom and democracy around the world, America has done everything to withhold the will of the free nations of Europe to determine their own fate. 
in the interests of the Aryan race. Crying crocodile tears of the oppressed Slavic nations, they do everything to submit countries in their own backyard. The crimes against the fatherland have not been left unnoticed either. Were the freedom fighters in Eastern Europe who did not fight with American weaponry and vehicles? Did the arch traitor Spear did not take his silver coins from the American departments? One thing results from these facts. America is a dishonest political entity which speaks in lies and trickery and is only fair that we act in retaliation against her perfidious machinations. To this end, we will assemble our secret service to conduct espionage work within the American territory. We will not instigate riots or anything of that sort. Rather, we will use various forms of covert action to make the Americans or to make America feel more interested in our partnership. Absolutely. All right, so the African Cabal fighting the black market. Uh, we could fight that, but I don't really care. Reclaiming the pact. Well, that sucks that we can't do that. Um, and actually, there was one comment saying that we can't go to war with Sweden, which is, I w like we some of us wish we could go to war with Sweden. I wish we could go to war with Sweden so we can beat them up, put them into the pact, so that way we can get to Finland. It feels terrible that we are just basically cock blocked by Finland because we can't get Sweden, which doesn't make any sense since we do have Muscovy under us again and Iceland. So honestly, even without Sweden, heck. We should be able to go to Finland regardless of Sweden and then bully Sweden into accepting our proposal because we would have Finland and Norway and Denmark. So, it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Alright, so help the Baatists. Oil crisis spirals across the world. It's becoming increasingly clear that we want to stabilize our supplies. We need to support those factions in the regions friendly to our interests. Uh, how do we help out? Oh, what is this? Send weapons to the Arab Republic? I want to send... Oh, the secure port. Okay. I want to send, like, like soldiers down there. Oman is on fire. Okay, well, what else? What else is new? Insertion. Alright, we can send soldiers. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. Pretty good. Alright, so, we have all these guys. Helicopter boys might be a bit too much to send down here, but we'll try it. And can we send guys down here? We have no reason to evolve ourselves down there. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but okay. Oman is falling apart as well. Let's see. I don't want to do things too quickly. Yemen, Oman. Wait, so which Oman do we like? Not you guys. Not you guys. Not. Do we like anyone here in Oman? Oh, wait. Was it you guys? Oh, it was you guys. Authoritarian socialists. Is that the side we really want to help out, though? Hold on, how many Omans are there? The Sri? So we have the conservative Democrats, despotists, and then you guys. Well, if we can send volunteers, I guess so. We could send Han Krebs, but I don't think Marines are going to do really well down there. Oh, that's just me. And they have no airbase either, so. <clears throat> oh, we're getting involved. Okay, never mind. As soon as they say we get involved, they won the war. Or did they, or is it... Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Well, oh, yep, they did. Great. Oh, and just in case, send them some goods. We don't have... Because they don't have a Mediterranean port. Well, wait, hold on. Why does it say Mediterranean port? Of course they don't have a Mediterranean port. They're in Oman. That's the Arabian Gulf and such. What the heck? But after shifting the window, the pain we know... Contrary to the widespread belief among the global American population, Martin Borman is not a heartless man who has no sympathy for those who have experienced grief and misfortune, although his position demands a strong heart and an indomitable will. Even he can feel pity for the misguided race that has been dishonored by the Oriental barbarians. <clears throat> Surely it was a Fuhrer Adolf Hitler who brought them victory at Pearl Harbor, but the Japanese atrocities in the Pacific War solely on their hands. And if there's something certain about American society, it is that they loathe the Japanese more than us. We can manipulate their sentiments to get their public opinion on them, of them on our side. Lamenting their national loss, we can remind them that they are not alone in the grief and that we, the Germans, know that as no one else. What it means to lose their national pride that was taken from us during the, after the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, at the very least, America can stand for herself. Who was here for the poor Germany besides a group of patriots who were d denounced as radicals and criminals by the democratic world? Alright, hey, we can get some action here, huh? I like a little action in my life. Alright... In defense, defense, uh, reconnaissance, I'm going with you. Any field marshal? Bergdorf? I don't even read his stats. I like Bergs and I like Dorfs. Berg. It's like mountain or hill. Dorf is a village, isn't it? You might as well help out then and take Haima. Oh, good. Good job. Head on in here. Hey, you guys have been encircled. I love helicopters so much. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, it feels good to have a little bit of action in your life. You want to help out? Let's uh, actually go over here. There you go. 
If you're fast enough, you can literally just encircle and kill them off. Crisis and Nanjing pray they survive. Well, we'll see what happens. Hey, they're dead. I love getting involved in Middle Eastern affairs. I'll be offensive if you can. Ah, oh, I love it. Still 0%, whatever. Anything else for spending money? What about Asia? No. I thought we'd have something here too, but that's okay. Give us a little more organization. Actually, just go up here. <clears throat> Alright. Not bad. Ah, and they capitulated. Just sometimes you just gotta walk right on in. Uh, we can do that one because we can. And we'll do that one because we can as well. We could attack. Oh, get up there just in case. Defending is so much easier than attacking. At least sometimes. Oh, you can actually just win right there. Just go and do that. It is, has anyone else revolted here? So much spending and building. I love it. Africa, nothing either. Nope. Nope, no one else has revolted. That's good. God dang it. We won too fast. I can't believe it just held out the communists, too. But whatever. Pain as we know it. Reduced arms in Europe. Borders across Europe are manned by hundreds of thousands of men with a pact in the OFN engaged in one of the most world's highest stakes staring contest. The situation benefits nobody, tying down countless men in vast quantities of material that could be better put to use maintaining security within the Reich. It would provide a great deal of goodwill if we were to offer to reduce our deployments against OFN aligned states, provided they do the same, of course. Perhaps in one day they will call the Fuhrer Martin the Peacemaker. Here we go. Absolute loyalty. And then, we don't have to do this anymore, but I do want to get more conservatives up here, and more conservatives over here as well, so that'll be good. Oh. More options? Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Domestic infrastructure. Yes, I don't care what happens. Just build, build, build. 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 Well, it looks like we got reduced arms in Europe done, but we also have Unternehmen Draka ready to go. Let's see what happens. Very good. Next focus. The fruits of diplomacy? We could do that. Why not? It's been a long time since Americans and Germans sat about a table together without violence occurring. They may have hoped that the traitor Speer would have come out on top, but now the dust is settled, and they will have to learn to deal with us, and we will have to learn to deal with them. We will send an invitation to a joint U.S.-German conference that we might establish cordial relations with our old enemy and show the world that we are not some monolithic state of monsters. Once this is accomplished, we can reorient our policy towards our true enemy in the East, which we've already started doing so. Anything else around here? No. Actually, yeah, our current involvement in the conflict is minor. Uh, the more resources we send to help, the better... We resources we get once conflict ends, death of Ho Chi Minh. Ah, oh, good. Present radios are done. And I've, I did, uh, let's see. Rostau to Paulusburg, at Rostau to Katarinza Stadt. So, we have that one going already. It is nice. Anything else? Not really, no. Um, cool. Oh, wait, hold on. We're not quite done yet. We need the research thing. Nakonf training, that'll be good. So, awesome. Fruits of Diplomacy. Soon enough, we'll have anti infantry anti-air. Now we got to figure out what do we want to do. Vanguard of the West. We get less military loyalty, but more reformist loyalty. English issue. Human over England. Support our claims. Only Borman can go to America? Or yet another failure? Oh, you don't, we, we don't get to choose. So get the ARPA to work. Not quite loyal. The best we've got. Oh. I want to name it Kukuk Vogels. Kukuk Vogels. I want your name in Zimmer in the backyard. The kitchen closed. Well, alright then. Beautiful. 9.2%. It went out even higher earlier or later on. Whatever it was. I don't know. Infantry anti air. It is almost 1970. So Tokyo standoff. The Great Conspiracy. Has an Empire of Japan gone mad? Let's hope so. So after this, we're going to go with uh, this one just because we can build faster, especially civilian factories as well as max factories in the city. It's a little bit ahead of time, but I don't care. Let's see anything else. Yes. Bug political enemies. Only 80%. It doesn't matter. Let's do it anyways. Yeah, recruit. 
And anything up here? Not yet. And that is okay. The fruits of diplomacy are placed in the sun. Vera Borman has been quite pleased with the performance of the Wehrmacht and their mission to take back the islands in the Indian Ocean. Although at first glance it may seem like a fruitless endeavor to reclaim some measly islands in the vast expansion of the ocean, the position they provide is important to the survival of the Reich. Borman is elected to visit the islands to gather all the knowledge that he needs going forward while maybe surveying a new location for a vacation getaway. Oh boy. Also, the Stockholm Conference response. A necessary facet of cooperation is communication. The American translator announces in slightly accented German, speaking more to the room than to Borman himself. If the Reich wishes to speak with the U.S., they must consent to the mediation or installation of a hotline between the Oval Office and Germania. This is a simple measure to tr create trust between our nations and allow quick resolution of any incidents that may arise. A method for our leaders to resolve such issues is critical for the expanding of relations. The fear felt less sure of the benefits of such a plan. It was certainly possible that it would lead to a resolution of some, dis dis some disputes but also he knew that it would lead to the Americans making demands on him, of him on a much more frequent basis. It was one thing for the U.S. to object to the Reich's actions in the form of a speech across the sea. It was another to give them the power to make these criticisms directly to the Fuhrer at any time they saw it fit. It would elevate the Americans almost to the level of equals. As the German delegates argued amongst themselves as the German response, Borman allowed himself to think on the merits of the proposal. In the end, Borman made his decision, relaying it to his fellows and instantly stopping all further debate over the subject. The German translator gave the Reich's official response to America. Or the American proposal. Great idea. Perhaps we can try, maybe in the future. Such a proposal is beneath us. Well, just like the one you can get between the US and Japan, if we lose more political power, we lose things. That's a price worth paying. Great idea. The Stockholm Conference succeeds. As they shook hands with the president, Monson Bowman could not help but feel a slight or significant amount of weight lifted off his already heavy shoulders. The Americans were willing to come to a deal and the Reich would reap a great deal of benefits from it. Naturally, the Americans had not become friends overnight, but the Fuhrer had no need for friends. He had, need, had a need for American missiles to be aimed at Tokyo rather than Germania, and that was what he had gotten. Any more than that was a simply a blessing. The fear of a rare smile was playing on his face. Return to the delegation. We are gathering the supplies to lead the conference center. We have won a great victory for the Reich today. He informed them, be proud of yourselves and of your country for the fine work you've done today. They had not been particularly helpful, of course, but he was in too fine a mood to complain. He glanced, glanced over around the room, and his eyes met that of an American president for a brief moment. Of the American president. He wondered what Hitler would have made of what had happened here today. Would he have denounced Bormann's actions, condemned the prospect of ever allying with a nation full of Jews and capitalists? Would he have ever permitted the right he had forged in blood and iron to work together with a corrupt country built upon liberalism and democracy? Bormann's thoughts were interrupted and soon soon after, however. My Fuhrer, he seemed like Reichsminister Minister Hebel wanted something of him. It is thanks to your wit and bold view for the nation that this feat has been accomplished. Hebel glanced back at the diplomats and celebration and suggested that we stand or stay for a round of the finest Sweden, Swedish vodka for before returning to the Reich. My treat. The Fuhrer considered the man's proposal for some, for some time. Ultimately, however, he shook his head. Not today, Walter. There's so much work to be done. Two eagles, both alike in dignity. Very good. Success. We love success, right? Very, very good. So, at this point, any place that has... Uh, actually, we gotta get these guys too. So we have more conservative. Let's get some more conservative support from the people. Disempowering the reformists. I think uh, there's not really not else here. Sixty-seven percent for skilled workforce. Not bad. Slave population slowly going down. We still have sixteen million slaves here, but no strings attached. Here he's here, Mr. President. The aide bowed before the Chinese president, leaving an open door behind him. Gao sat down his pen, his name half scribbled on the document. The president let out a sigh. Bring him in, please. Technically, there was no need for please and thank yous. If anything, they took more time away from his work, but he felt nice to be nice sometimes. In through the door, a slender, slinked a slender man, clad in business casual with a fedora resting sideways on his head. He looked like a ripped porter to the president, but he supposed that's how he got in. Mr. President, the man said in broken Chinese, his thick German accent slipping through, honored to be in our presence. Similar, Gao Zongwu said, flashing a not-so-sincere smile, must have we've been a long flight from Germania. The man ignored his pleasantries, instead reaching for a briefcase. It appeared as though a hurricane had torn through the case, likely the fault of mismanagement at the airport. Despite the clutter, the man retrieved an intact file and slid across the desk of the president. The two met eyes for a moment. Gao, with an eyebrow raised, eventually he relented and opened the folder. Seconds later, he showed up. The camp I tell you are outside of this room, Gao said in a hushed whisper. If they find this, you may have Sinai, but I don't. My head. The man raised a hand, silencing the president of China. Without a word, he opened the folder once more, underlined specific numbers with his finger. Thousands of German arms supplied the Chinese army. Planes, ships, tanks, and most importantly, money. No strings attached, a feeling that the president had, hadn't felt in decades. Both men knew that what the shipments were for, and yet both knew they must act oblivious. Go, Gao commented, or commanded, and the man stood and left, the folder still on the table. The smell of war in Asia is detectable from Europe. Very good. Anything else we can do here in uh, Spies? Oh, there we go. Unternehmen Schwetz, Russia. 
97% chance of the mission succeeding, sabotaging the target's infrastructure. 2% chance, wait, 2% chance of the mission failing. So it must be like 2 point something and 97 point something for that. Good. Oh, well, we have won victories, which is nice. Reclaiming the pact we can't do, which sucks, but, you know, we've already said that before. So the, the thing is succeeded. Great. Come on, I just want to spend more money to help out our country, our place in the sun. How about... Ooh, let's get rid of that first. 9.3%. Slowly crushing down that debt. Hopefully 1970 will be okay for us. So, Malton Named after the first roads in the Autobahn under Adolf Hitler, the islands must be made connected by the most advanced military and civilian infrastructure money can pay for. A permanent military base requires hundreds of thousands of dollars to maintain alone, but establishing one from the ground up under such short notice will increase the cost even more. Even if economists gripe, the general have assured that the Fuhrer, that all the costs will pay for themselves in soft power. The Wehrmacht in Paradise. Bowman was surveilling the tropical paradise of Muratius. It was truly a beautiful place. Pristine beaches, lush green hills, a perfect ocean blue. Why, if he ever had the time, he may want to take a vacation here. That thought was dispelled, as Bowman would never have time. He would be a fuhrer until the day he died. Muratius had more to it than a beautiful vacation destination. It was a strategic location, being a key island between German and African holdings in the Indian Ocean, which had little superpower presence, and of the superpower presence there, it was most likely the sphere. As part of the Cold War, Paradise needed to get it quite a bit hotter. There would be plenty of room for ports and ships and planes and guns and soldiers. Oh my! Perhaps the island would sink into the sea under all the stress, and perhaps the locals would sink under all the stress as well. I was going to take a walk around and see what the most important locations would be for the military buildup. The island had multiple spots for natural ports, and it would be easy to establish a naval base. It was really almost perfectly built, and some gift that finally gave, finally made its way into the Reich's hands. It came across one of the admirals, and also enjoyed the location. It's beautiful, isn't it? The admiral said. Indeed, the Kriegsmarine did an excellent job securing the location. Indeed, I don't think anyone or anything could make this place better. Oh, I can think of one thing, and what is that? The Wehrmacht! Ah, the Wehrmacht. Yeah, I really don't like that we don't have anything here. I really don't like that, so. Order collapses in Egypt. Is this the beginning of something that could happen? Well, let's see. Well, despotists, volunteers. Oh, look how s uh, smiling this authoritarian socialist is. Actually, we can send two divisions. Oh, yes. Under Axel. Hey, they actually do have an airbase, too. That's not bad. Uh, 60 planes. That's not really worth 60 planes, is it? We do have our planes over here, but whatever. I'm going to keep those guys over there for now. We have some interceptors, huh? I don't care about sending cast. Our, our plane should do well enough, so. Oh, we can get to 100 then. That's fine. Did we send the people to the wrong place? Ooh, we might have. No? Kingdom of Egypt, not bad. Muslim Brotherhood, huh? Now we can help them out. Saeed Cuba. Oh. Saudi Arabia? What's going on here? Um, yeah, we're going to have to send them divisions too. We don't like these guys. We prefer these guys. Alright. Wolf. That's a Wolf hide. Very good. Um, how many planes can we send? Oh, we can send 120 as well. That's fine with me. Here's a good goal. We're going to finish... Oh, these guys are fighting each other. That's fine. That takes forever anyways. And I've, I've fought down there before, and that sucks. Fighting that region just sucks butt. Booty and butts. Alright. 3 out of 3. Well, more conservative support then. Overwhelming conservative support there. Alright, up next. Anything here? No. Anything over here? Probably not. Well, this one's till. But we're trying to get that research anyway, so. Uh, yes. Might as well. Who cares? Nope. Nope. Just open it up anyways. Egypt is ongoing. Hopefully Yemen can win. I have a feeling that they can. Oh! This is... Oh, the National Socialists. We can't send the volunteers, huh? I guess we don't We don't care about that part of Africa, to be honest with you. Um, man, where are guys showing up? Alright, well, that's good. Send vehicles? Oh, we can send vehicles, finally. Oh, we can do this. There we go. There we go. I did both, and then we'll do both down here, too. 
Any other decisions? Not really, no. There we go, finally. Oof, that took too long. Alright, so we're just gonna take out, like, Cairo and such. So that shouldn't be too bad. Actually, they don't have anyone over there anyways. Wow, we just... <laughs> that was so fast! Oh my god! <laughs> we just let... Okay, let you go. And then they win! Okay! Wow, a global race. The Aryan race needs not to be confined to just Europe. All corners of the world, the Aryan people seek out their Laban's realm, a place to establish strong families with countless children whose formative years are filled to the brim with mentions of the fear and the tribe of national socialism. Although the priorities for Germanization have been placed in Eastern and Northern Europe, there exist pockets of German territory that have only a handful of Aryan peoples living on them. By extending the Germanization program to so even the holdings in the Indian Ocean, spreading the Aryan race will be a breeze. Great. Oh, we get them as cores. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Oh, Israel exists too. Oh, God, I wish you had a focus tree. Uh, oh, the Italian... So, oh, it's Mr... We are balding guy? Hey, they have a balding guy. Cool. I'm glad we finished it up so fast, just because now I can focus on just one of these at a time. Love it. Global fleet. Or, naval hit chance. Um, actually, what is our fleet like? We do have 10 carriers, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, global fleets. Refitting costs, cruisers... I almost never go on the right side. Let's go to the right side. Modern Kantai Kessen. Limiting in a quick, decisive battle. That's what the Japanese used. Well, we don't... Eh. Yeah, I'll go this one. Why not? Just, just because we do have a global sort of fleet here anyways. Alright, maybe we'll use Bergdorf again. I was hoping that we would finish Egypt off quickly, and we did, so... Awesome. I wonder how strong the Saudis are. I just go here, here, here. That'll be alright. Um, I told you to go. Could you just do that? That'd be great. Alright, we just overran another division. And we're just kind of having a good time. Wow. Riyadi. Wow. We just overran them. Holy crap. I love helicopters. Look at this. I'm not even doing anything. I should really help them out, actually. Go right there. We'll go right there, actually. Oh, the Italians are up there. Huh. Alright. Tabuk. I have a good feeling this is not supposed to happen. Like with all the success we're finding, so... Uh, yeah. There you go, head on over here. Global race. A second mushroom over the Pacific. The former British colony of Ceylon is an ideal spot for nuclear weaponry. Close enough to Japan to stand as a constant reminder of the presence of Germany, but distant enough to remove any notion that Japan must take action against the Reich. With the fear of probably leading, leading the charge against the Japanese, this message will not go unheard of in the assembly halls and parliaments of the world. German hegemony extends far beyond just Europe or Africa, and Germany is a global empire and a global threat to all that oppose her. I'm going to the Ceylon conference, huh? The Ceylon missile crisis. Nice. Anything else? Nope. Uh, how about over here? Yeah, we definitely want that one. So, we're still doing that one though, so. Ooh. Good, good, good. Let's see. Outpost and Indian Ocean. Yes. Oh, we really build those places up. Nice. And get more infrastructure. One of my favorite things. Infrastructure modernization? Yes, please. Denmark, yes. 71%. Good. Alright, so we literally conquered all this, except for... You literally have to conquer everything here, huh? How many minutes we lost? No, we haven't lost anybody. Oh, it's so nice. But now we'll probably lose somebody here. A little bit of lag. This is literally the definition of a perfect... ...involvement. We lost literally nobody. Oh my goodness. Abdullah al Satal Salal. Wow. I love helicopters so much. 
This will be if you have, have air support too, though. Unter Nehmen Schwarze Report. Top secret eyes only to all members of the Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung. Unter Nehmen Schwert. Russia, West Siberia. HVA agents have successfully infiltrated agents and warned the local garrisons about a fictitious railway worker revolt, distracting them. From there, they used smuggled dynamite to sabotage multiple railways and a few armed plants. They then proceeded to meet at the extraction point for pickup. This should cause significant logistical issues for the government of West Siberia. May Germany be in safe hands. Success in the snow. Wait, our... Oh, their GDP growth will decrease. Oh. Their army professional will, will go down too. Alright, time for Unterblich. It feels good to be Daddy Ballman, doesn't it? Wow. Actually, do we have any other decisions around here too? It looks like we might have some few things. We need extraction four. It's almost 1970, so super close. Victory, victory, victory. Conflict is uh, substantial. You bet it is. After that one, let's go ahead and do Vanguard of the West. Why not? America and Germany, uh, America and Germany will never be true allies. Conflict with their dude race, corrupted by Judeo-Bolshevism and the blood of Africa, is inevitable. Nothing unites people like a good enemy, however. And so long as Japan continues their imperialist policies in the Pacific, America will be their foe. Our pragmatic relationship with the Japanese is long ended. Now America is our new reluctant friend. Dagger to the heart. Roshan knew his work was important, but he had not known it was this important. He had known, of course, that he was being hired to build missile silos, but he had not known what missiles within would belong to Germany. Nor had he been aware that they would be missiles of such a devastating, devastating variety. He stared at the blueprints laid in front of him, sl uh, slack jawed. From his silos upon the beaches of Ceylon, the Germans would be able to launch their weapons across all of Asia undeterred. Roshan wondered if the Kempai Tai had already discovered this plot or if they would be caught just as unaware as he was now. Once the missiles were present, it would not stay secret for long. The Japanese would never stop trying to destroy the German advantage that missiles in Ceylon would bring. And of course, there were other ramifications to consider. In align with themselves so totally the Reich, Ceylon would become, rather than the small, relatively friendly island nation that had been for years, a missile carrier in and of itself. A new weapon for Germany to wield against the Japanese. How would, would, would Roshan truly be willing to help out with such a thing? He glanced again at the check he had been cut for with his help on the project. Yes, yes, yes he would. Nuclear stock about social development would begin to improve. A victory to remember, my friends. Everything's going up. Except for industrial equipment and industrial expertise. This makes me sad. Oh, so sad. At this point, continue with industrial improvements. We're going to grab, not that, we're going to grab some of this. Enhance industrial administration. For more facts, max factories in a state. I'd love more factory output. Yeah, let's grab that one. Oh, actually, no, let's grab this one first, just because we need that for our extraction such stuff. Anything else around here? No, no. Yeah, there's literally nothing else. There you go. And anything here? No. Oh, Eastern Industrial Buildup. Yes, please. Uh, no, no. Awesome. Good. Even more. More, 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 more. Anything over here? Yes, please. Absolute conservative ma majority here. Very good. Anything else here? Nope. Uh, how's the budget looking? Just peachy. 10.7. Good lord. That's so nice. Vanguard of the West. And then the English issue. Ooh, they have to be in a faction with them. The Oriental Concern. Let's do that one. The Japanese Empire was an erstwhile ally of the Reich during the Second World War and assisted our nation in a successful defeat and conquest of both liberal plutocracy and Bolshevik communism. Yet our dalliance with the Japanese was always a marriage of convenience. They had their own reasons to come at odds with their mutual enemies, and there was enormous differences between both the government systems and ideological underpinnings, underpinnings of the German and Japanese states, not to mention our obvious racial superiority. As tensions with Tokyo over dominance of the old world heightened, it is incumbent upon the Fuhrer to find a new ally of the day for the Reich. As luck would have it, our old foes are in the fantastic position to provide such a role. The Americans hate the Japanese even more than they hate us, and the two have already nearly come to blows with the Hawaiian Missile Crisis. It'd be wise for both of our governments to come to recognize Japan as a mutual enemy and to coordinate our economic economic and military strategies to contain the power. As a side effect, bonding over shared abhorrence for all things Japanese might soften American perceptions of Germany more generally. Very good. Uh, what do we have over here now? Ah, yes. Karatenzastat Tobaku. Yes, yes, yes. And Decker satellites would be nice. I want more. Come on, I want to get involved more. I keep spending money and time on this, but it means nothing. Ah, uh, that's only 28 million, huh? That's looking better. 9.9. .9. It was over 10, but that's okay. Whatever. This is, this is not looking good. The Siberian Soviet Social Republic formed by Yagoda. We have Zukov over here. And we have the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. 
This is not going to be looking good for now, us now, is it? I'm a, I want to say a little worried, but I'm a little, I guess you say, pleased at the timeline outcome. We want a glorious war against the Reds, right? To remind everyone that the fight against communism is not yet over. And this will be a giant fight too. Like I can, I can see that everyone here will peacefully reunify, maybe, or at least these two. So, Baden Bekampfum. Darius had long admired the idea of democracy. His brother Zan had studied it in America and come back espousing ideas of freedom and the right to representative government. Dar Darius had been beside him all the while. While he had never seen such a system in action, he had nevertheless joined in on his brother's pro-democracy protest, calling for free elections to guide the people of Iran instead of some German backed shop. The police had interrupted his protest rather violently. The two brothers, alongside many of their friends, had been taken captive. The next morning, they were bound, blindfolded, and told to march until the police told them to stop. Were they being taken away to some faraway prison or paraded around as examples, or was it just an attempt to scare them straight? The two brothers did as they were told, occasionally exchanging a worried whisper in the direction they thought the other one was. It felt like they were marching for hours, though it was difficult to tell. Eventually, the order came for them to, for the march to end. They were to stand in place and wait until they received further instructions. They stood for a few moments until Darius heard a rather distinct voice. It was saying something in German. Unable to contain his curiosity, the young activist pushed his blindfold over up ever so slightly until he could see through it. He let out a sharp gasp. What is it? His brother pressed. Darius's word came out shakily. It's a firing squad. Very good. The Japanese concern. The Reich would be willing to offer their friends in the U.S. information on military installations in the provisional government of Free India. France announced withdrawing a folder containing the very same information. The HV had given him a very detailed list of what information he would be permitted to offer the Americans and when he would be allowed to do so. After all, the Reich greatly feared being the party in exchange left more in the dark. Hank raised an eyebrow. The U.S. of A. would like to offer, in turn, recent reports on the state of the Imperial Japanese Navy. He slid his own folder under the table, carrying the American intelligence. Wordlessly, the two agents swapped the information, each giving the papers a curio curiously gl cursory glance before throwing them away. This continued for another about ten minutes, each of the men offering information about the Japanese and other giving a separate list of details about the sphere to swap with it. The first few days of these negotiations had been more tense, with more bartering and discourse, but Franz and Hank had quickly realized the actual amount of in information being exchanged between the countries would never be changed. As such, they devised a faster method to do it. After the day's quote of top secret documents had been shared, the two exchanged glances in the silent room. Franz spoke first. I think that the Brazilians would take the cup again. Their team is simply too good. For the rest of the time that had been set aside for the meeting, the two intelligence agents bickered about their favorite teams. A bulwark against the yellow menace, football, soccer, balls on the field. Support their claims. As any fondness that once existed between the Germans and Japanese people is dead and buried, but even our great antipathy for Japan is nothing compared to the frothing rage of the Americans. Permanent Japanese occupations of the so called treaty ports is a disgusting embarrassment for the U.S., and the return is easily the highest priority foreign policy objective for any American president. Owing to this, the White House will surely be most grateful for the number one global superpower to come to their aid and offer sincere support to rectify this terrible crime. Henceforth, the German Greater Reich shall officially recognize American sovereignty over the ports of San Francisco and L.A. These great American cities have had their access to the Pacific carved away from them by untermention Asian aggressor aggressors for far too long, and the world ought to know that Germany stands by their rightful return to American civil civilian and military control 100%. Very good. Uh, yes, employ and Dr. Lillens. Uh, so basically, doing this one doesn't make any more sense anymore. Bug political enemies does no literally nothing for us, so... Because 80% is the max we can get. Let's go ahead and expand the North Sea Exploration. Very good. We need resource extraction 4 and 4 to do that. That is okay with us. Absolutely 100% okay. Minus 8 billion. Very nice. And any more interactions? Yes, please. More conservatives. As you can tell, this video is a little bit longer than the last one, but that's okay. That's okay with me. Obviously, it's okay with me, or I would have stopped. Getting through this part of the focus tree takes super, 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 super long. Hey, 10.10. Just because there's so much here. The English issue. England's place in Europe is complicated at best. Despite laying only a stone's throw across from the channel, American influence there remains strong, and even the Reich's mighty navy would not, rather not risk conflict with the carrier force at this time. We cannot understand our own control, but we cannot risk perfidious. Albion becoming an unsinkable aircraft carrier or an American barracks once more. We can at least extract promises from the Americans that they won't use the island like they did Iceland as a sort of Damocles hanging over Europe ready to annihilate us with the push of a button. 
supporting specific claims. Vata Havel, the Reich's Minister of Foreign Affairs, steps up to a microphone. He is surrounded by the press, most from the Reich, but some have been invited from other countries. No, notably, no reporters from Japan or any of its allies in the sphere have been invited. Havel had figured that their exclusion would lead to a weaker response from the Japanese, and that would be better. The Empire of Japan, Havel began, taking moments uh, for a moment for the crowd to calm before continuing, has long occupied portions of the U.S. and 50 states that make up its entirety. Havel made certain to emphasize the word 50. The Fuhrer has asked me to make clear the position of himself and the Reich on this illegal garrisoning of foreign lands. The German Reich on the matter of Hawaii and the treaty ports recognizes these lands as legally, fully, and fundamentally American. Havel continued, unperturbed by the murmuring and shouting of questions that erupted soon after. As such, the Fuhrer firmly urges the Empire of Japan withdraw the troops from the U.S. and began the process of transferring these islands or these lands to the rightful American administration. As the reporters surged forward to ask questions, Havel answered them as best he could, though he refused to give much more information. His mind was elsewhere, and as he focused on the looks of the excitement clearer on the faces of the American press, he could only hope that the gratitude was shared by the American public. Friendship comes with benefits. Ah, they get more political power, and we get more opinion together. The enemy of my enemy is sometimes my enemy, and my friend, but sometimes also a very, very strong enemy. Anything else around the world? Nope. Nope and nope. Come on, I'm ready for things to work. Well, actually, I'm not ready for things to blow over too much with... Uh, oh, are we done with this? Oh, we're all done with this. Nice. With the Middle East and Iraq. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, look at that. Infrastructure. I don't care what, it, what you build. Just build it up. 85%. Nice. The English issue, my friends. Ah, the English issue. Their side of the deal. Uh, Reproachment with the Americans cannot and will not be a one-way street. Just as we are willing to make concessions for the benefit of the future of the relationship, so must the Yankees. The Reich has proven itself willing to respect American acquisitions in the North Atlantic and British Isles, and so must America respect Germany's acquisitions in mainland Europe. From the commencement of war in the 30s and to the present day, partisans across the Reich's European colonies have consistently had their acts of terrorism against the German order funded and equipped by the American dollars and American weapons. If there's to be a detente between the president and the Fuhrer, this abhorrent state of affairs must come to an end. Washington will claw back its incipient campaign for freedom in Europe to d diplomatic and symbolic gestures. Only no more Slavic partisans with American guns. The English issue. The Fuhrer watched the television in the corner of the office, quietly grinding his teeth. An American diplomat, one whose name Bormann could not bother to recall, seemed to be pushing for much closer ties with the English. It was brazen enough to publicly call for, or at least suggest, that the Brits would find a nice, comfortable home with their former empire and the... OFM. Bourbon scoffed, as if the OFM was an alliance of friendships and ideals instead of a military pact just like any other. Nevertheless, this had to be addressed. If the Americans and the Reich were to work together, Britain could not be allowed to serve as a floating missile asylum just outside the Einheits Pact. The Fuhrer was certain the Americans would understand this. Not wishing to miss a moment of the broadcast, Bormann kept his eyes on the screen as he grasped around for the phone. He put his hand close around the receiver and immediately pulled it up to his ear. I need Havel to get in here, the Fuhrer commanded, watching the American delegate and the Prime Minister speak. The Brits are causing trouble. Not good. But this is going up more and more, which is nice. Actually, let's see. Open the ledger. Let's see. Ideology, political power. Well, search. Uh, previous. Country, ideology, stability. Uh, war support, political power. Yeah, they got a lot of political power. Factories. We... What is wrong with America? Holy cow. We are the most... Of course. Of course we're the most industrial nation in the world. Of course. Absolutely 100%. Their side of the deal, and only Borman can go to America? Relations with the Americans are improving measurably month by month, and the President has made numerous actions and statements conciliatory to Germany and the, to the Fuhrer. One great obstacle still remains in the business of calling a relationship with the Americans fully repaired, however. That of the in-person meeting. All the discussions so far between President and Fuhrer have been through proxies, and Hale Bowman's feet on American soil will forever cement the great strides in cooperation and understanding made between these two titans of the Atlantic. Imagine it, the Fuhrer of Germany, shaking hands and smiling in the Oval Office with the President of the U.S. Could any sight be more striking? An agreement over England. As it seems that the English membership in the OFN is not was not meant to be. The Yanks had several questions to this deal, or qualifications, which the Reich was able to meet. If England was unable to join the OFM, then it would be similarly be denied entry into the Einheitspact. Naturally, this also meant that the Reich invading the small island and forcing them into the German sphere of influence was also off the table. It seemed that England would forever be doomed as a neutral at a time in which neutrality was less and less sustainable. While of course not ideal, these were easy, things easily agreed to. The safety of the Reich came first, and England was not a prize worth jeopardizing that. The deal was also an early sign of how beneficial Stockholm had been. The Americans and Germans would continue their close, friendly collaboration, and the little wrinkle that was England was easily smoothed out. This victory serves as a reminder to the doubtful of how truly beneficial Stockholm was to the Reich. After all, that we had not found common cause with the Yankees, it's very possible that there could now be missiles at, aimed at the heart of Germania. Heil Bowman, who has brought us the great victory on the diplomatic stage, England alone. Yeah, the Americans are just pushovers in this, in this timeline. No more research. There's a little lacking for stuff that we can do around here, so that kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, yeah, might as well. 
And let's finish one more focus, and then we'll call it an episode. How about that? Mm. Ah, yes, very good. Only bomb into America. Oh, civilian construction, just what we wanted, my friends. Let's go and do this one. More up, up, please, thank you. Ah, yes. Screw building our little puppet states here. It's all about what we can build here and now. In the Reich. Very, very good. Any more technologies? Not yet. Not yet. And after that, yeah, we've done a lot of this focus tree already, which is awesome. Obviously, we still need the Golden Age, which is going to take a little bit more time. But we'll, I'm pretty sure we'll get there by the next episode, so... Alright, so I guess up next is asking for an invitation. A toast to the detente, Vata Hebelsled. A toast to our fill, Hans Krupp, Hans Hebel's handsome young underling called up. An explosion of cheers and clinking glasses broke out across the dining table. The drunken bureaucrats of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs down the glasses and mopped up the last scraps of food as a way to arrive with a new bottle of champagne. Swedish vodka, now champagne, I think Hebel's becoming a drunker. Von Schreck was smiling wryly, sipping gently on his glass of sparkling wine. If he was angered by his lack of involvement in the Stockholm Conference, he didn't show up. As long as we're, he's sober for a trip to Washington, Bowman smirked, I'm still waiting a response from the American. Why are they taking so gosh darn long? The fear of the GGR on American soil is perfect propaganda for both our nations. Perhaps I could accompany you. Von Chirac was staring distractedly at Hans Krupp, who had risen to his feet to propose you another toast. We've been through this, Baldur. Stay put. If the Americans try anything stupid, I need someone in Germania to take the reins of power. We await their acceptance, and they refuse. A thick cloud of smoke hovering hung over the office. Bowman grinned as he caught or lit up another cigar and threw the lighter to Baldur von Chirac, who cut it effortlessly. The chief of the party chancellor had always been an amusing man to drink with, or so Bowman thought. He was so slippery as an eel, as effeminate as a degenerate, and more pretentious than a priest, but amusing nonetheless. They burst into laughter as Bormann's secretary, Ge Gehard Klopfer, sunk into the room. My fear, Gehard Klopfer nodded to Bormann. He turned to von Schirach, Pata Counselor. The Americans have responded to our request. They wish to maintain the detente, but declined your offer of meeting with the president in the D.C. The smile faded from Bormann's face in an instant as he curled his fist, snapping the fresh cigar in half. He ground his teeth together before losing a deep breath. So be it, he muttered under gritted teeth. The mongrel dogs don't want open relations with us. They just don't want the fear on their degenerate land. So be it. He leapt to his feet and faced around the table. You know why, gentlemen? Fear. The American mongrel fears us. The president fears us for obvious reasons. What a pathetic nation. Von Schirach checked his watch. This, this was going to be a long night. And we shall let the insult <clears throat> slide. In which, tomorrow, we shall do the Italian debacle, which we'll read now. But we have to figure out whether we do a confrontation against Italy or whether we should do break the ice. Now, personally... I think it'd be kind of good to break the ice with Italy because we can get some more trade benefits for us. But the Italian debacle. Once our stalwart ally during the war, the Italian Empire is now our greatest enemy on the European continent. Despite owing us everything they conquered, they refuse to recognize our supremacy over the old world and instead challenge us at every turn or this must end one way or another. Had we been at the height of our power, it would have been a matter of days, but we haven't yet recovered from the civil war. As things are, we need to find an accommodation. We can either maintain our predecessor's strategy of diplomatic attrition and isolation, or we can face them at the diplomatic table and try to at least coexist in peace until then. Until the next crisis, of course. But regardless, hope you enjoyed this slightly longer video. If you did, consider leaving a like. Please, uh, subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my Discord link if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow as we shall continue doing a great job with reforms and Borman's expertise. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.